Good morning and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to officially begin our webinar. I do want you to be cognizant that this webinar is being recorded. Um, today we're going to um, review some open enrollment pre-meeting tips and tune-up ideas for medical benefit coordinators and case management staff that are functioning in an assister role um, within their respective jurisdictions. So before we begin, I'm going to turn it over to Brian Walsh to do some housekeeping and if those of you who are new to WebEx to walk through the functionalities before we launch into the formal webinar presentation. Brian, do you want to take it over? Thanks, Jeff. Um, everybody should notice on the right-hand side of their screen, they should have a participants panel. Within that participants panel, down at the bottom right-hand corner, you, should, you have the ability to um, raise your hand at any part during the presentation, specifically during the question and answer section. This will notify us that you have a question. We will then unmute your phone and allow you to verbally ask your question. However, if you do not want to verbalize your question, you can use the question and answer panel, which is below the participants panel on the right-hand side of your screen. You can type in your question, submit your question to the presenter. I will read your question aloud to the entire group, and then the presenter will answer your question. If you have any follow-up questions or clarifications, you can also use the question and answer panel to type in those um, clarifications. I will read them aloud um, for the presenter to answer. In the participants panel, next to the hand icon that you can raise, you should also have a feedback icon, allowing you to tell the presenter to slow down or speed up or to speak so, um, softer or speak louder. Um, that type of feedback helps the presenter to, to know how to continue with the presentation. Jeff, I'll hand it back to you. Great. Um, I know we're often asked if material, if the PowerPoint presentation today will be made available to participants, and that will happen at the end. And Brian will talk to you about when you're able to actually download that to your computer. Um, in addition, please be reminded we are recording. And then at the end of this webinar, there will be an uh, opportunity to provide feedback. So we do appreciate um, if individuals will um, take just a few moments to respond to the um, evaluation survey that will be prompted at the end of today's presentation. With that being stated, on behalf of the Illinois Department of Public Health's Ryan White Program, and in particular Patrick Miller, the Benefit Coordinator, myself, and Brian Walsh, we welcome you to today's webinar that will be addressing open enrollment ideas and kind of tune-up ideas as medical benefit coordinators, um, case managers, and um, we have been really advocating to have um, those individuals who actually enroll and are assisted through the Ryan White or Premier System to attend these workshops. We'll have one more today um, that begins at 2 o'clock. Um, this will be um, this afternoon before um, webinars we've done in this series. We'll do a, another follow-up webinar as we as department have identified the slate of insurance plans that will be um, wrapped around in the 2019 year. Today's information is not to identify those because we are still working with the Department of Insurance and vetting those plans. However, the intent of this webinar is to um, give ideas and tips for how you prepare your um, applicants for open enrollment and specifically how that is reflective of their enrollment into the Ryan White Premium Assistance Program. With that, uh, many of you may know, for those who aren't, we have two very firm open enrollment dates that will begin here in the next um, few weeks and then one in about six weeks. The first open enrollment at the federal level will be Medicare open enrollment. Um, this is an annual open enrollment period. These open and end dates are always firm with um, CMS at the federal level. 
Medicare open enrollment will begin October 15, 2018, and it will extend to an end date of December 7, 2018. Any plans that are selected during Medicare open enrollment will have an effectuation date of January 1, 2019. So the first open enrollment um, period that we will approach here in the next few weeks is Medicare open enrollment. I will let everyone on the phone know that we at the department have already developed our introductory letter that um, actually goes out to our targeted Medicare population to alert them to the October 15th to December 7th open enrollment period for Medicare clients. We, that, those letters are already probably hitting mailboxes this week. Um, and that letter does address um, to Medicare clients the open enrollment period and any components that we would want them to know from the department perspective. And we'll dive into those more in the coming slides. Along with the mark with Medicare open enrollment, we also have the start of the 2019 Marketplace Open Enrollment. That will begin on November 1, 2018. It will span 45 days, which is a redacted short time frame from two years ago. We used to have a full 90-day open enrollment period, but last year um, the federal government um, collapsed that to a 45-day period. And though that period is consistent as we're looking at 2019 open enrollment for the marketplace. Um, that will begin on November 1st, 2018, and um, marketplace open enrollment will um, continue through December 15th. And any plans that are selected during that time frame will um, be effectuated on January 1. We have um, developed the first um, pre-open enrollment letter for our marketplace participants. Um, those are actually going out in the mail as we speak also, and it is going to highlight several of the topics in which we will address um, today um, regarding how do they prepare for their open enrollment. We find it always important to let individuals know that Medicaid open enrollment is continuous and ongoing throughout the year. They have a rolling open enrollment and that an individual's eligibility is a 12-month period. And so when the individual reaches their 12-month recertification, Medicaid does issue letters to them. I'm encouraging them to recertify so that there is no loss or gap in coverage through Medicaid. Um, but we want individuals to know that um, if you're working with clients that are in Medicaid, please be cognizant of the fact that they may be approaching open enrollment um, at any time throughout the year. And if they become eligible at any point of the year for Medicaid, they are um, automatically eligible for application. The department does monitor Medicaid enrollment and an individual reaching a benchmark for Medicaid, and at that point, they are required to move into enrollment to Medicaid. At that point, the Ryan White program functions as a safety net if Medicaid has any denials of formulary medication on the ADAP formulary. So it's important to realize how these three um, health plans, Marketplace, Medicare, and Medicaid, work in partnership with the Ryan White Part B program. Coming up this year, it's very important to be aware of two um, types of insurance that are actually gaining some momentum. If you're at all following any of the uh, media blitz that is happening around open enrollment, um, these plans were um, available last year but did not receive as much um, media um, scrutiny or promotion. Um, it's important to know that the associated health plans and short-term limited duration plans 
will not be eligible for premium assistance through Ryan White. On surface review and just listening to some of the media presentations on these two plans, they seem to look as though they are inexpensive and may be um, a cost-effective approach to selecting an insurance plan. However, for those who are chronically um, ill or deal with chronic illnesses, similar to individuals with HIV or AIDS, these would not be appropriate plans for them. Um, the associated health plans function very similar to how small employers develop their health plan by creating a, um, a kind of a cohort group that could be coming from different sectors, which we all know in um, the cost risk for insurance plans, there is the benefit of having those who are more healthy on the plan than those who um, may utilize their health care plan. And so grouping and bringing more people into a group entity, it tends to be cost effective. But for health, um, associated health plans and short term limited duration plans, some of them do not have pharmaceutical arms to them. And it's important to know that the short term limited duration plans will actually have automatic termination dates on them that are not flexible. And many of them also in the short term um, limited duration will impose lifetime annual caps. So it's important to know that um, as a medical benefit coordinator, as an assister um, that may be working throughout the um, 2019, you will see these plans. And we are just here to um, highlight from a Ryan White perspective, they are not ones that um, we advocate or support um, for our HIV positive clients we serve, and they will not be eligible for premium assistance. That does not mean that they would not be eligible for medication assistance um, because those programs do have um, slightly different requirements from a federal level. This next slide is just kind of breaking down in a little more detail the um, AHP and the short-term delimited plans. What's very important to know, they're not required to follow the ACA guidelines for essential health benefit buckets. And they appear to be cheaper plans, um, but they have less coverage and many of them do not have a prescription arm to those. So um, be aware, be cognizant as um, you're working with individuals who may have come across these plans and may be asking information about their viability for Ryan White assistance. The bottom line that the program would want all of our stakeholders statewide to be aware of, um, these two plans are not eligible for um, premium assistance. Let's talk a little bit about Medicare and Medicaid premium assistance. Um, many of you may be aware that if a client is eligible for Medicare Part A and B, they are eligible for their Medicare C or D plan, in which makes them eligible for premium assistance. This also is true for individuals who are on Medicare that elect to select a Medicare supplemental plan. So be cognizant that all our Medicare clients, as well as our Medicare clients that have selected a D plan and a Medicare supplemental, they are eligible for premium assistance for the program. It's important to know that Medicare clients are not eligible for the marketplace. We do see times where, um, especially the last couple of years, where individuals um, are eligible for Medicare and somehow they slip through a loophole in the online marketplace portal and they actually get enrolled into a marketplace plan when really they should be on a Medicare plan. It's critical that um, our medical benefit coordinators or assisters that are out there are familiar with the requirements for Medicare and if you are working with an applicant that is Medicare eligible, that that is the benefit home that we should be um, guiding them towards. Uh, because 
um, the marketplace at times when they determine later down the road that they're not eligible um, for the marketplace because of a Medicare component, they will drop that insurance. So it's always best for our population that at the start of any open enrollment period, they are mi migrating to the appropriate benefit home. It's also important to know that if a client is eligible um, for Medicaid, just like for Medicare, they are not eligible for premium assistance for off and on marketplace plans. Uh, so when an individual in the state of Illinois, which we've had from the beginning, expanded Medicaid, becomes eligible, which is 138% of the um, federal poverty level, they will be eligible for expanded Medicaid and they then become ineligible for the marketplace and then ineligible for premium assistance for an on or off marketplace plan. It's important to know that um, the enrollment for individuals who submit marketplace plans that are eligible for Medicare or eligible for Medicaid, their premium assistance will not be processed by Ryan White because it is by federal guidelines, not the payer of last resort at that point. This is an important slide that we're going to be discussing. We have been working with our clients throughout the year on this, but I want to address um, COBRA and a couple ancillary um, components to premium assistance. For those of you who do not know what COBRA is, COBRA is um, an employer-based insurance that the federal government does require of the employer to offer to their employee if they're being released from um, their employment with an employer that has an employer-based insurance. COBRA plans usually last or have a duration of 18 months. They are um, comparable to the insurance that the individual applicant may have had with their employer. Many clients do actually um, decline COBRA because COBRA plans are very expensive. They're almost sometimes twice the amount of a marketplace plan. What's critical for our assisters to be aware of is that COBRA or loss of employment is a lifetime um, events that does allow them to move to the marketplace. And so we are actually um, sending a targeted letter to all our COBRA um, active clients within our premium assistance program at the state level to guide them to moving towards the marketplace plan for 2019. Always important to know that anytime a client or an applicant experiences or meets a lifetime change event, they have 60 days from the events of that lifetime um, topic to actually elect a marketplace plan. And so we've provided some um, definitions of what the marketplace recognizes as life-changing events, and that could be loss of a job, a relocation, specifically to Illinois, um, a birth of a child, a death of a family member, a marriage, a divorce, an adoption. All of these are elements of life change events that will allow an individual to roll into the marketplace um, outside of open enrollment. And loss of COBRA or the beginning of COBRA is one of those events and we um, do require that our medical benefit coordinators and case managers um, guide individuals away from their COBRA plan to their marketplace. Please note that the marketplace will require, may require supporting life-changing events. So any type of documentation about the termination of a job, death certificate, birth certificate, divorce paperwork, marriage certificate. Um, if an individual has a life change event, the marketplace usually requires documentation to substantiate that. And then we also like individuals to know those clients that are categorically ineligible for the marketplace or for Medicaid are able to enroll in off-exchange sister plans. Um, the department last year worked with 
two insurance companies, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois and Health Alliance that did allow off-marketplace sister plan enrollment for those who were categorically ineligible for the marketplace or Medicaid. Um, we are working to solidify if the companies that will be coming on to the marketplace for 2019 will be supporting um, that enrollment. And once we are aware, we will let you know that. As always, the department does highly discourage auto enrollment um, for a plan. For those of you who may be new to the marketplace and to Medicare, um, it's important to know that most insurance companies and will have a feature with the marketplace this year where if the client is in a current plan for 2018 and during the open enrollment period for either Medicare or the marketplace, they do not actively go in and select their plan for 2019, then at the end of the enrollment, open enrollment period, that insurance company or the marketplace will drop them into their same plan if it is still available um, within the insurance structure. Or if it is not, they will then be transitioned and enrolled in a comparable plan. That is highly discouraged by the department. It is not to the advantage of our population to allow out enrollment because we never know if um, medical providers will be in network. Um, so please be cognizant for the marketplace, all enrollment will take place on December 16th. So any individual who has currently been enrolled in a 2018 plan does not go in to select a 19 plan, they will be auto-enrolled on December 16th. It's important to know that once a client does go in and self-select a 2019 plan, it's important to know that the auto enrollment feature then is shut off during in, within their profile. So we highly encourage and very close to require that our clients do not allow auto enrollment to take place as it could cause some um, access points to providers in that by allowing that without doing the appropriate vetting of plans that are meeting their overall comprehensive health plan or health need. It's important to know that um, our program as last year are, are working very diligently to ensure that there is an appropriate application of premium payments that are made to 2018 and 2019 plans. As many of you may be aware, one of the attributes that we recognized early into the 2018, I believe it also started in 2017 enrollment, is that if a client had a negative balance on a current year plan and they selected um, a plan for the upcoming year and they provided that information to the department and the department then issued its binder payment to that 19 plan that the insurance company at the point of receiving that payment will break it apart and put what is needed to deal with any deficits that are sitting on the previous year plan and therefore will truncate the amount of binder payments that will be made to actually effectuate the 19 plan. Similar to last year, the department will be trying to minimize the impact of this process, which we have no control over at the department level as that's an industry standard. So starting um, in this year, the letter that has gone out to all our Medicare and Marketplace clients is notification to them that we do require an action item activity on their end. On the second page of the letters that went out, we are requiring all applicants to reach out to their current 2018 provider plan 
and solicit if there is any deficits, negative balances on that policy, or if there are any credits sitting on that policy. They, can, they will need to actually physically call their insurance provider to ascertain or collect this information. There is a form that is provided in the mailing that has gone out last week that individuals can complete and return to us. We ask that that action item letter does have a signed dated signature at the bottom of the applicant and that they are returned no later than October 5th to the program. The program, once receiving those final payment records, we will go into um, our provide enterprise system. We will generate a payment that will effectuate their 2018 plan through the end of December. So we will go in before um, the end of October and make all final payments that will carry that 18th plan through its term year, which is December 31st, 2018. Once that plan has been paid through our administrator pool, Administrators Incorporated, the program will then close down the PAP enrollment. So I'll say that again. We will actually then, once that final payment is made uh, before November 1, we at the department will close the PAP enrollment. And it will not be reopened until we receive appropriate paper documentation of the plan that they selected for 2019 with what is their binder or um, initial payment that is required to um, secure our lockdown that enrollment. So um, this slide kind of articulates what I just shared about that action item requirement. These are in the mail already to all our um, insurance premium assistance clients we're serving at this point. And um, this is highlighting that prior to November 1, we will be making final payments for 18 plans, and then we will be terming only the off and on exchange plans. We will not close Medicare Part D and supplemental plans, um, only because Medicare supplemental plans um, have a different start or end date depending on when the applicant actually selected that plan within the plan year. So we will follow the supplemental plan um, effectuation date. Please be mindful that we will not be closing their medication assistance enrollment. Those will remain active even though we will be terming the premium assistant enrollment. Uh, that is a safety net, but also allows us to ensure that our insurance side of the home is cleaned up for 18 and we are well prepared for 19 enrollments as they come in. The next slide, um, I won't spend much time on, but it gives, um, oops, I, it's coming up an example of that. What I wanted to provide for you here is the Medicare letter that is going out to all our applicants. So these are in the mail already. Many, all our Medicare clients would have received this um, hopefully before Wednesday or Thursday of this week. If you have not seen the letter that's going out, please be cognizant that your lead agent and your regional medical benefit coordinator has received an electronic version of this, and the department has asked for lead agents to disseminate this to all their um, case managers so that you're cognizant that this Medicare letter went out so that if you receive calls from any of your Medicare enrolled clients, you are aware of the information that the department has shared with them. In addition, this is just a snapshot, excuse me. I apologize, I thought it was going to sneeze. Um, this is a snapshot of the letter that is went out to all marketplace individuals um, talking about the action required component, which is page two, which will be coming up on the slide here so that you can see it. So this is page two of the packet of information that went out to all our marketplace 
um, plan individuals with the action required were there to provide us um, their medical and dental information, and most importantly, what is their pay-through date, are there any credits, or is a past due amount that are on those plans. And once they complete this form, it can be submitted through postal mail to the department, it can be faxed to the department, or it can be emailed to the department, or if you receive this as a um, medical case manager or medical benefit coordinator or an assister and you have access to provide, you could submit this to the department through a health benefit update, of which then my and Patrick, Patrick staff will adjudicate that final payment. So this slide and this action required uh, page of the packet for Marketplace and that is targeted to what we require of all our Marketplace plan individuals to ensure that the department does adjudicate all final payments for 18 plans in an appropriate manner of how that plan is set up. And this slide is just an example of um, how the department will move through um, closing that half enrollment for 18, as well as then opening their 2019. And it just walks through the protocol of um, us making the December payment um, be prior to November 1st, and then the PAP program will be closed, and the program will wait for the new 2019 enrollment information before we will reissue um, PAP enrollment. So it's very important here that individuals are aware and that we're articulating to our participants that the program is required. It does need all the appropriate enrollment information on any policy a client selects um, because there is sometimes confusion by the um, applicant that because of the department is assisting with their premium that they misbelieve that we have access to their plan information. We do not. So we do not know when um, a premium may have increased or decreased, or more importantly, when an advanced premium tax credit has been removed. And the client is ultimately responsible of making any um, changes that they are notified by their insurance plan to forward that to the department so that we can ensure we are making appropriate monthly premium payments to ensure that there is no loss of insurance. So let's talk about what's important for a medical benefit coordinator or a case manager or an assister, um, a sister within the jurisdiction. What should they be doing in pre-meeting tune-ups with their clients? It's important for us at the department level to really um, acknowledge and to clearly articulate that we do see our medical benefit coordinators, our case managers, all of our supportive case managers, peers, client reps as champions and ambassadors to the program, and that during this tune-up time, we want to be making contact with all our participants who are avail themselves of our services so that they are getting the appropriate information of steps that they can take or need to take leading up to their respective open enrollment, i.e. Medicare on October 15th or Marketplace on November 1st. It's always important in these pre-enrollment appointments to check with clients' paperwork and any account payments that they have. If the client needs assistance, in doing this action required outreach with their insurance plan, that is something that could and should take place in the pre-enrollment appointment period. It is a perfect opportunity to be reviewing the applicant's finances, their um, income to see if there's any significant changes in either direction, up or down, that would make them eligible either for the marketplace or expanded Medicaid in the state of Illinois. It would be important that you are working with the client to make sure they're cognizant of 
how fluctuations in their income finances will impact what benefit home they roll in. It's important to also confirm if there's any relevant um, Ryan White um, applications that are coming up. You'd want to make note of any of your applicants who might have a recertification that will be happening during open enrollment so that you're staying on top of that so that there is no lapse in service um, for individuals because be cognizant, if the client enrolls in a 2019 marketplace plan but are closed from Ryan White because they didn't meet their recertification deadline, the department is prohibited from making any binder payments for that plan. So it's always the best idea for case managers to kind of, at this point in time, review their caseload and try to um, place their um, caseload in the buckets. Those who um, you know you'll need to reach out because you want to ensure their enrollments are in place moving forward. We have, as in the past, always um, held, had a checklist for applicants and case managers. We call it the ACA passport. Um, this is available within Provide Enterprise to all um, Provide Enterprise users. This is a nice form to help as a tool to help the individual and the um, assister to organize the client's marketplace or Medicare paperwork. It's important that they know who their medical providers are, what type of medication they're in, what are their current plans, what type of documents that they need to be preparing and pulling for open enrollment, like your, their financial paper. It's very important that you're having a conversation about their tax preparation, um, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But it's a time that in the pre-meeting tune-up, you would go over the action required document, and if there is assistance that is needed with you, you could do that. <laughs> I apologize for the sneeze. You could assist the applicant in reaching out in a three-way conference call to actually capture any um, amounts order that on behalf of the client and their policyholder. It's important that once this form is completed, this can be faxed to the program or um, the assister or medical case manager, if they have access, can actually create a health benefit update that would be adjudicated by um, the department's team upon receipt. It's very important during these tune-up meetings that you're addressing the requirements of the Ryan White program that they select an advanced premium tax credit when they're selecting their plans in the marketplace. Failure to accept any type of subsidy from the marketplace from the federal government in an advanced premium tax credit um, platform would make them ineligible for PAP. So if you have a client that at this point doesn't select the advanced premium tax credit, but selects the premium tax credit option, that makes them categorically ineligible for premium assistance. The advanced premium tax credit, for those who may be new to this terminology, are those subsidies for individuals that um, are between 100 and 400% um, the federal poverty level, the subsidy, their income level, addresses what types of subsidies that will go to assist in their premium payments. And the advanced premium tax credit um, assures that the federal government will pay that subsidy to the selected plan each month. And therefore, the client and the program will only be paying the true out of pocket. The premium tax credit is when the client says to the federal government when they select their plan, I will have my um, subsidy adjudicated or reconciled when I file my taxes. That's an option, but if they select that option, they're not eligible for premium assistance, and there is no flexibility on that. Um, as we've said earlier, it's a time to help go over those income reports, because any changes in a client's income will impact any over or under payments for the client that could impact that subsidy, and we want to avoid that. 
It's important to know if you are working with any client that is on an employer-based plan and they haven't elected it, that is a requirement of the program and of the federal government. Again, we are a payer of last resort. If they have missed the open enrollment period for um, their employer, they are required to present to um, case management and to the department when their next open enrollment is for their employer, and that has to be um, on letterhead from the HR department. Um, because we have to ensure that if they have an employer-based insurance, they're selecting it and not going to the marketplace. That's a federal requirement. It's a great time in these tune-up times to update any contact information for the client. If they have relocated, if they have new telephone numbers, it's important that we do an update of the client's contact information um, that's there, including mailing address. This is an opportunity to actually discuss with the client, especially those who have elected to have no correspondence or mail sent to them by the department. That should be reviewed because any time that they're selecting no mail, they then are missing out on key information opportunities that will impact their insurance because we at the department are prohibited at this point. If the individual for life circumstances still wishes not to their direct residence, this is a great opportunity for um, assisters to talk about the potential of a web user account as a way of um, them also getting information through an electronic medium from the department. It's important for individuals to know um, that we can only pay for plans that have been approved by the program. We have not, the department has not selected its slate for 2019. Um, the team back at the department is working closely with the Department of Insurance to identify and vet plans that are a requirement of our federal partner. Um, once we select those plans, we will do immediate notification to the public on that. Those usually happen by mid-October. But it's important to know that there are many brokers that are out in the marketplace and a client may elect to work with a broker and that's to their um, option or choice. But it's also important for them to be aware that they would need to inform their broker of the requirements of Illinois Ryan White if they're expecting Illinois Ryan White to help wrap around that program. Um, because the broker is going to try to move them or assist them into a plan that they deem might be beneficial, but it's not beneficial if it's not one that is pre-approved by the department. So that's fairly critical for individuals to know. If you know of a client that is actively engaging with a web broker, please be cognizant that the program will have no working relationship or partnership with American Exchange. So there is not, will not be any information exchanges between American State Exchange and the department, and therefore um, it relies to the responsibility of the applicant for that information. We're also um, wanting to promote um, one of the access points for a marketplace plan as well as Medicaid, and that's Get Covered Illinois. It is um, a very reputable site, and I think a site that we in the state should be very proud of. It's a no wrong door policy, so this is where we encourage all our applicants to actually enroll into Medicaid and or in the marketplace. You can also go to healthcare.gov, which will redirect and connect with the Illinois system. Um, so. It's always important to know there's no wrong door of access to the marketplace or to Medicaid, but the quickest, shortest, clean link to the Illinois programs will be to get covered Illinois. The next slide actually provides you their um, help desk number and their hours. Um, we find that the information that um, their frontline staff provide are very accurate and timely. Um, I will say that the department does secret shopping to this site, so periodically as we're approaching open enrollment, moving through open enrollment, the department does call these numbers and propose situations to see the type of information that is being given to clients um, and 
that's why one area that we are fairly confident in this hotline and the great work that Get Covered in Illinois has done. I cannot highlight again, that's why we put another slide intentionally here about the advanced premium tax credit. Any individual that is um, being eligible for subsidies must take that in an advanced premium tax credit format. Um, there are no options to that. If they do not take it, they are not eligible for PAP. Some reminders that are pretty important for individuals to be aware of. Ryan White Part B Premium Assistance Program will require all individuals to utilize the contracted defense and pharmacy of the program. Currently that is CVS Specialty Care Mark. That is a mail order. And failure to order medications through the approved pharmacy within 90 days will result in immediate termination of half premium assistance. So if an individual who is on the premium assistance program is not filling all their uh, medication and their antiretrovirals through the dispensing marketplace, we will be terming your uh, premium assistance. Our federal partner, HRSA, has been quite clear that the only uh, the legislative authority for the Part E to assist in premium assistance is to ensure uh, cost-effective utilization of the ADAP formulary and failure to utilize the ADAP formulary and the department's dispensing contract and pharmacy makes you ineligible for premium assistance. If at any point in time an individual is termed uh, from their PAP program because of not using the pharmacy, they will not be allowed to re-enroll into PAP until they provide documentation that um, all their medications then, including their antiretrovirals, are being dispensed to CVS, at which point then the department would reactivate their PAP program, and then that client will be monitored on a 30-day basis, and any failure to continue fills through um, the contract of pharmacy, there will be a permanent disenrollment from premium assistance until next open enrollment. During the federal site visit that the program went under in August, um, this policy um, standard operating procedure was recertified and re um, notified by our HRSA auditing partner to ensure that we're adhering to this rule. Um, this next slide is just some contact information that we want to provide for you so that as you're approaching open enrollment, if you have questions um, from a medical benefit coordinator perspective or from an assister perspective or from a client perspective, we do have our toll-free 1-800 line number. We also have our confidential fax number which is 217-785-8013. And if you're having any provide enrollment issues with Provide Enterprise, we encourage that to be those to be emailed to ProvideHelp at Illinois.gov, um, dph.providehelp at Illinois.gov, and those are being addressed on a daily basis. Brian, I, this does conclude the formal part. We are going to move in to open question and answers. And Brian, can you stage that for um, our participants? Thanks, Jeff. Um, once again, everybody, if you do have a question, you can use the participants panel to raise your hand. Um, we will then call your name, unmute your phone, and you can ask your question verbally. If you do not wish to ask your question verbally, you can use the question and answer panel in the right-hand side of your screen, type in your question, submit your question. I will read it aloud for the presenter to answer. We have uh, the first question. Is COBRA coverage considered AHP or STLD plan? 
COBRA plans are not considered either of those. COBRAs are a federally um, mandated insurance plan where an employer who offers their employees um, health insurance and then that um, applicant or that employee um, is laid off or steps away um, from the place of employment, the federal government does require that the employer within 45 days um, offer COBRA, at which point there starts a 45-day time period where the um, employee has the option to select their COBRA plan. Um, if they select that COBRA plan is um, good for 18 months, they're very expensive. But what's most important for our medical benefit coordinators to realize is that that step of loss of employment and the offer of COBRA does trigger a life event that would allow that applicant to move to the marketplace. And the biggest takeaway that we would want our assisters out there to realize is that we want individuals to move to the marketplace instead of staying on, staying on their COBRA plan because COBRA plans are very expensive and the marketplace plans are usually 50 to 60 percent less and it, it, they can obtain comparable health care coverage in the marketplace. But in the short, uh, COBRAs are not part of the um, associated health plans or not a form of the short-term eliminated plan. Those are a specific niche plans that are um, part of the network. They were there last year but didn't get much fanfare. They're getting much more media attention during this open enrollment period. Our next question, can a client enroll in marketplace insurance up to 60 days following discontinuation of COBRA coverage? Patrick, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, so once someone elects COBRA coverage, they can only switch if they experience one of the life change events or the COBRA actually turns and runs its course. Um, the exception to this is open enrollment. Anyone on a COBRA plan can enroll on an open enrollment marketplace plan. And we are going to be sending out letters um, to all clients on COBRA plans explaining this. Um, explaining the fact that we will pay through the end of 2018 for these COBRA plans, but start at the start of 2019, um, we can no longer make payments for, towards COBRA plans, and that's why we strongly suggest that these clients switch to a marketplace plan during open enrollment. Next question. What if a client is in the fifth or sixth month of COBRA and past the 60 days from the loss of employment? Will we still need to have client get a marketplace plan instead of continuing with COBRA? Um, so the answer to that is yes. Um, kind of uh, compounding on the, the previous answer, um, the clients will be eligible to enroll in a marketplace plan during open enrollment. It is very difficult to obtain monthly premium statements from insurance companies whom are being paid through PAP. Is there any way around this when completing the eligibility assessment? Not really. The hard, the reality is that I think many of our assisters and case managers are um, aware of is that the department is not the owner of the client's health insurance. We do not have access to that information. And so it's always important during um, open enrollment, during the six-month recertification, that the department is being provided with the most current premium statement so that we can um, adjudicate the insurance payment record that is a true reflection of what that client's monthly premium is. It's also important to know that through the rhythm of a 12-month insurance plan, there inevitably always is some fluctuation in that monthly cost. 
we know usually around March or April, there are um, usually increases in premium assistance. Um, specifically, if a client hasn't filed their tax return and the um, federal government has caught up to them on that and they've had an advanced premium tax subsidy or they've had a subsidy, that can be removed, which could increase, inflate a monthly premium payment by $100 to $200. The department has no idea of that. And so it is the responsibility of the applicant to inform us. Now, I think that the question is a very valid and true question and it is sometimes a challenge to get that statement out of the insurance um, policy. That is where a telephone call needs to take place and that is where um, I can have Patrick talk to more detail about it, but we have um, a form that we've developed that people can actually get verbal information from the um, current insurance plan about where, where the current monthly amount is, frequency, if there's been any changes and where that check needs to be sent, if there's any uh, amounts owed on that, how you get that to the department. And so the, the, the verbal form that we have developed is to be used in a very specific situation. And generally, um, the most common cases that we run into are with the Medicare Part D plan. Um, some of the plans, they, they don't actually mail billing statements if there's a credit on the account. Um, and in, in those very rare situations that the client would be unable to obtain a current billing statement for their Medicare Part D, I would recommend filling this out. Um, but also include a comment explaining exactly why you are filling this form out. Um, the form isn't intended to be used to replace monthly premium statements, um, especially for the insurance marketplace plans, which those statements, uh, as far as I'm aware, they are mailed to the clients each month. So it would be the client's responsibility to get those to us. We have a verbal question um, from Judith. Judith, are you able to hear me? Yes, I hear you, thank you. Patrick, thank you for answering my question about the COBRA coverage and I did email um, AFC about this and I just wanna make sure so that the client does not end up without any health insurance. I was told by AFC that the client can enroll in marketplace insurance for up to 60 days following discontinuation of his COBRA coverage, which will end for him on December 28th. He's going to be out of the country and then he is going to enroll in health insurance after when, when he returns. So this works, right? So yes, that does work. Remember, at the point of any life change event, which the terming of a COBRA plan is considered a life-changing event. The applicant has 60 days from the date of that life event to select through the marketplace. Okay, um, so thank you. I just, I needed to hear that said three times. <laughs> that's okay. COBRA, you know, um, we all know that COBRA is a very time sensitive and it's a, a different maze you have to walk through. So. Um, there's many times we at the department have to walk through it several times together um, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're all on the same page. But um, anything you want to add to that, Patrick? I think you pretty much covered it. Just, just FYI on this particular COBRA coverage, his coverage is being paid 95% um, of it by the previous employer, which is pretty rare. Very rare. Yeah. He yep. got a very good severance package. Anyway, mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Judith. We've got one more question. Um, if a client just lost his job and has not enrolled for COBRA yet, should I encourage him to enroll in a marketplace plan? Definitely yes. They should be. Now, he, this applicant is eligible for a 2018 plan currently that would take them through the end of December. So they don't have to wait for open enrollment. They can enroll in a current 18 plan because we have a life event 
it's within 60 days of that life event. So the client could be insured from the moment that they select and that first premium payment takes place through on the end of December. And then in open enrollment for November 1st, they could select their 19 plan. I hope that was clear and if more details need to be give, provided, we're happy to do that on our end. Next question. Can you go in depth on how the medication process will work for clients that are required to order their medication through Walmart due to their health plan requirement? So please be cognizant if an individual has insurance and the department is assisting with the monthly premium assistance, if they want to continue to have the department assist with their monthly premium assistance, they are prohibited from getting their medication filled through Walmart. They will be required to go through the department's dispensing pharmacy. If the client wishes to continue their dispenses through Walmart, that's of their choice. But please note their PAP um, assistance will be terminated. Next question. Oh, I think that that's oh. a great question, um, Brian. So. If there is any follow-up that is needed on that, I'm happy, and Patrick, happy to address that. Absolutely. If a client just lost his job and has no income, then he would not be eligible for a marketplace plan, correct? So if an individual in this scenario um, has become unemployed and they have zero income, they are eligible for expanded Medicaid because they have a life event that has brought them below the 139% the federal poverty level and they should be going to Medicaid as opposed to the marketplace. And you know, that's one of the, I, I, I think the question was really great and it does point out the importance of um, individuals and assisters and case managers to utilize the monthly housing income statement that helps the um, assister and the applicant walk through monthly income so that you're getting what the federal poverty level is because the critical benchmark is anytime you're between zero and 138% of the federal poverty level, you're eligible for expanded Medicaid in the state of Illinois. But if you are 139 or above without an employer-based plan and not categorically ineligible for a marketplace, you should be moving to the marketplace. And kind of piggybacking onto that, if the client lost their job and they're unemployed and they're in Medicaid and then they become employed again and that employer doesn't have a um, employer-based insurance, that makes them eligible within 60 days to go to the marketplace. Next question. Will CVS have a record of all clients ADAP approval regardless of insurance? We have had problems with this issue in the past. So um, great question and let me clarify where some individuals are coming into some challenges with that. So yes, CVS always will have um, an enrollment record on clients that are approved by the department. There is a nightly agent that does transport that enrollment to CVS on a nightly basis. We are currently working with CVS, which we are very close to where 
that nightly agent is going to be a complete um, dump into their system each night of who's active and who's not. What some people are experiencing is that there are some clients who they are being enrolled for the first time into medication assistance or premium assistance. And so CVS is not, a, they're in that delay period of when the enrollment is being reviewed, certified, and then transmitted to CVS. And if the medication script from their provider hits CVS before our enrollment record hits, then that client hangs in limbo because CVS has no record of that client and would not have a record until the evening after their enrollment has been adjudicated by the department. So we're seeing some gaps where people think there's a mishap on CVS's end when really it is a, a script got to CVS before the enrollment. And we have been working with CVS on that and there are steps that preliminarily have gone in place with CVS to try to rectify that and the long-term positive resolution will be coming in the next month or so. We just received a follow-up from the previous question about a client who just lost his job, has no income, um, regarding the question of whether he would be eligible for a marketplace plan or not. Um, what if they anticipate gaining employment relatively soon, which would put them back over 138% FPL? So what I would share at this point, it's kind of how you're rolling your dice, because right now, they have no income. So if they went to the marketplace, because there's a life event, the mark, and they're gonna enter in that they have zero income, the marketplace is gonna migrate them to Medicaid. But if the client anticipates that they're going to be employed within a two, three, I would say anything over three months, I would encourage them to, or three weeks or so, I would encourage them to go to the Medicaid just so that they're ensuring some type of health coverage in this gap period. But if they think it's gonna be a very short two to three week turnaround time, they might wait until they roll into the marketplace. But that is, you know, that's a delicate, tightrope you walk, because it's all gonna depend on what they're reporting to the marketplace. Patrick, do you wanna add anything to that to nuance it more? Nope, not really. That's where, and it seems like this individual asked the question is having a meaningful conversation with their client, which we really appreciate, is that they're getting the nuances to how that gap of income is going to be handled. And if they're aggressive and see themselves moving into employment within a week or two, um, you will hold. But always know that the marketplace is going to navigate off of what income is being reported and then what income hub they're going to um, ping, ping against that we don't have access to, i.e. the Illinois Department of Economic Security. Next question that we have um, is more of a statement. When my client lost employment and applied for Medicaid, his income from the previous month was used in the calculation and he was determined not to be eligible due to income over the limit. His zero income was not taken into consideration. He applied for Medicaid two weeks after the termination of a job. So, uh, um, again, what I would be taking into account with that statement is that their, their Medicaid is pinging the Illinois Department of Economic Security, which is monthly reporting pay stubs to people. So I will say that he probably hit that unsweet spot of what was actually in the database at the um, 
Department of Economic Security to what's there, but I, I would bet you that after a couple weeks after that, and if zero income was still persistent, they would become Medicaid eligible. And that's the challenge which I want us to appreciate, and I think um, the um, webinar participant is clearly articulating is timing is always going to impact at what point people are moving um, in that and how these state systems speak to each other. But if the client can provide documentation of the unemployment, the Medicaid will override with the, with the Department of Economic Security shares. So anytime that you're applying for a benefit home, Medicaid or the marketplace, and they're denying based on old information, all the applicant needs to do is provide documentation of the current life situation, and that will trump their enrollment or what their system is. So that's important to know. Those are moments where that other um, state health department or state department that is adjudicating Medicaid or the marketplace would need just some added documentation from the client to actually move that enrollment forward. You should never be fearful to appeal decisions, especially when you know that they're on these bubbles to that. Just a reminder to everybody, if you do have a question, um, feel free to raise your hand. Um, we will unmute your phone and you can ask your question verbally. Otherwise, use the question and answer panel on the right-hand side of your screen, type in your question. Um, we will read the question aloud for the pres presenter to answer. Um, at this time, there are no more other questions. While we're waiting for other questions, something that I want to um, address is the fact that if individuals are um, wanting to um, become um, trained assisters, it's important to know that the Illinois Ryan White program is recognized by federal CMS as a designated um, CAC organization that allows us to actually certify people into being a sister statewide. There are trainings that need to take place um, and to get a certified application ID and be certified through the Department of Insurance. And we do encourage individuals through the support of their lead agent um, who deem that important as an avenue that people could be enrolling in as we're moving forward to 2019. Um, one other thing that we would like to mention is that the program has determined that it will suspend the $750 limit for our approved insurance plans this year. Um, so we will be uh, temporarily suspending that for all 2019 plans. There are still no more questions at this time. Great. We'll wait just a few more moments. Um, it's important to know that um, a takeaway, some takeaways that we would want for our webinar participants to leave with today is the important change around COBRA and um, meeting individuals with Active Cobra to move to a marketplace plan, and we will be doing a very um, individual targeted uh, mailing to that population statewide in the coming week. In addition, I think it's important to take away to be aware that um, letters are going out regarding um, Medicare open enrollment and to the um, preparing clients for open enrollment. Um, for 2019 for the marketplace, and that for those, that population that have active insurance through the marketplace for 18, there is an action required element 
that is time sensitive and have a date of October 5th where we are requesting outreach to their insurance policy in order to collect any final um, payments owed or overdue amounts and that the department will be making all final December payments on those 18 plans prior to the end of October, at which point then that applicant's current path will be terminated. We will close it down and it will not be reopened until 2019 premium information is provided to the department. That can be done through um, fax, postal mail, email, or through a health benefit update by the appropriate um, staff person in a jurisdiction. We have received two more questions. Um, the first question relates to the $750 limit for premium assistance. Um, so does this mean there will be no limit? So what that means is that the 750 limit is being waived um, for 2019 only, and there will not be a limit. That does not mean that individuals will be allowed to go to platinum or gold plans. It is preliminary, preliminarily in this early stage, we will be staying with silver level plans only and what plans those are through which carrier is yet to be determined as we are still working with the Illinois Department of Insurance on that final slate. The next question, when enrolling clients into a marketplace plan, should we be entering our CAC ID number NPN number or navigator license number? You should be entering your CAC number and the trainings that you will actually go through at the federal level, that passing of those federal trainings then have to be submitted to the Department of Insurance for your license. That is required when you are a certified CAC that if you are assisting an applicant that your CAC number is utilized during that enrollment. We have no more questions. Brian, do you want to address how they can um, save this webinar presentation um, and about the survey? Yes, so um, at the end, um, at the end of the presentation, um, when the meeting um, closes, you should be presented with a dialog box to download the slide presentation um, that you were just privy to. If you do not receive that dialog box, um, please send an email to the dph.providehelp at illinois.gov requesting the slide presentation and we will email that um, document out to you. You will also, at the end of the meeting, you will also receive a um, brief survey through a dialog box pop-up. Um, we encourage you to, to answer the questions on that survey. It helps us um, ensure that the presentations meet your needs um, as well as ours. Um, so again, please fill that survey out to win at the end of the meeting. Jeff, there are still no more questions. Okay, please be reminded that our last tune-up webinar will be this afternoon at 2 p.m. If any individual um, wishes to actually um, hear this webinar again, you're welcome. If you have colleagues that you believe should be on this webinar, they'll have a, the opportunity this afternoon. We will be making the recording of this webinar um, available within the coming days out on the website. And um, we will then be circling around with you um, when we have made the final determination 
of what marketplace plans are available for 2019 that the department is able to wrap around. In addition, we will also be notifying individuals when we have identified those approved marketplace plans that are off marketplace sister plans that are eligible for individuals who are categorically ineligible for the marketplace or Medicaid. Um, those, that activity we're still working on. It's important also to know that um, similar to last year, if Blue Cross Blue Shield is a plan of choice, um, our dispensing pharmacy is not in network with them. However, um, the department has negotiated with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois that during the 2019 plan year, that ADAP only clients will be considered in network through CVS specialty if they're enrolled in ADAP only. Um, so um, please be cognizant that the department has already negotiated that agreement with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois that um, if AIDS Drug Assistance Program participants who are on marketplace plans with Blue Cross Blue Shield and utilizing the dispensing pharmacy of the department, which is a requirement, they are in network for that. Jeff, we just received two more questions. Sure. Since there is no $750 premium cap, can a client opt to not take the advanced premium tax credit during enrollment? Absolutely not. The um, removing of the 750 cap does not remove the option of a client from a selecting an advanced premium tax credit. Let me be very clear again, because this is a great question. If the client fails to select the advanced premium tax credit during their enrollment, they will not be eligible for premium assistance, regardless of the waiver of the $750 cap. That does not mean that they're not eligible for medication assistance. That would be there also, but not during, not for PAP. Don't confuse those two options. Those are two very different protocol and policy um, directives that are being given. We have a verbal question from um, Esther. Esther, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello? Go ahead and ask your can question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, last year we had um, a client that was older than 50, not a U.S. citizen, no Social Security number. Um, we couldn't get her on a plan because you guys had the 750 gap. and. Since she was older, she had to do a, like a bronze plan. Is that still, did you guys just tell us that it's gonna be a silver? Can we choose something different? Because they are 50 and older, they're, she's an older person. Yes, yeah, so great question, Esther. And um, to that end, last year, there um, we did open up silver plans to everyone who is all the way up to 65 before they become Medicare eligible. However, if they're categorically ineligible for Medicare, they could select a sister plan outside and they should be selecting a silver plan. We will not be supporting any premium payments for platinum, gold, or bronze, or catastrophic, or for okay. um, the associated health or um, term limited plans. Those will not be supported through PAP. So, your client or your um, participant that you're dealing with should, if they desire, to select a silver plan off the marketplace. Okay, because she has illegal. She has no papers, so I just, that's what I wanted to. Yeah. Know, so, like, what, what would be important, Esther, for you to kind of wait for before you give any guidance to this applicant, is to mm -hmm. wait for the department to alert what off marketplace plans will accept those who are categorically ineligible. Last okay. year it was Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois and Health Alliance 
we do not know if those two plans or if any other plans coming, staying on the marketplace will open up that um, avenue and the department is navigating that right now with the insurance companies. So we will um, alert that at the same time that we're um, alerting the community of what plans on the marketplace will wrap around. Okay. And usually Thank you. when mm -hmm. you're welcome. And usually when a plan is wrapped around in the marketplace, it is extended to its sister plan outside the marketplace because they're comparable um, for that. So um, stay tuned for that. But that is okay. an ex excellent question. All right, thank you. We have no more questions at this time. Great. It is approaching 1030, so I know I want the department wants to be respectful of our participants' time. Um, please note we've left up the contact information here that um, we will be having one more opportunity if you want to sit through another um, um, rehash of this information at two, we're welcome. It's best to make sure that all our advocates and champion and field staff are knowledgeable about moving forward for 2018 and some of the minor um, changes and shifts that we're doing as we're addressing the market demand. Um, be cognizant that we will be approaching uh, Medicare open enrollment within two weeks and within six weeks, the marketplace. And please be working with your clients that are appropriate to do the action item request so that we can adjudicate their 18 plan appropriately for um, the end of December. And please be mindful that all PAP clients who have marketplace 18 plans before November 1, their PAP enrollment will be termed and they will not reopen their PAP until there is some documentation of their selection of the 2019. So that means if a client allows a rollover um, to take place, we're not going to know it got rolled over and there will be no payments made to effectuate that 19 plan. So it is, um, our requirement for our medical benefit coordinators, our case managers, um, and all those assisters throughout each of the jurisdictional regions that you're reviewing your caseloads, you're doing um, soft um, touch contact with them to make sure that everyone is aware of their options and choices coming for 2019. They're aware of steps that the department will be taking as it relates to their current PAP enrollments for 18, um, in addition to those who have COBRA. Please be mindful, don't be surprised, the first wave of letters, the pre-tune-up letters, have already hit um, the mailboxes for some of our clients, and we will be setting the second wave of mailings will go out when we have solidified the slate for 2019 after we hear confirmation from the Department of Insurance. So stay tuned for that information coming up. And we're hoping for a very smooth enrollment this year for 2019. Thank you everyone and have a great week. Brian, I think if there's no questions, we will conclude this webinar. Thank you again, everybody. Um, again, please remember the, to answer the questions of the survey that should pop up once we end the, end the meeting, um, as well as the files, um, the presentation um, you saw today, you should be able to download that um, when we end the meeting as well. If not, please feel free to send an email to dph.providehelp at illinois.gov and we will email you the presentation. Thank you, everybody.